the words are almost interchangeable, magic and art, that um, we have the concept of high magic, which is magic where you don't know what you're doing, essentially. You're just doing whatever comes into your mind on the assumption that this is an instruction from the forces of the universe. Um, it's completely spontaneous. It's, it's not got any of the, the censorship of the rational conscious mind involved in it at all. The same could be said of great works of art that you don't know why you're doing them, you're not sure how you're doing them, or what purpose there is, it's just something where you feel a compulsion that is bigger than you, that is bigger than yourself. Um, so, yes, I'd say that if you want to understand magic, try thinking about art. If you want to understand art, try thinking about magic. In fact, I believe that both fields would be immensely enriched if they were only to take on the values of the other camp, that we would have magic that, if it was all seen as being a form of art, uh, where it might actually produce wonderful works of art. It might actually produce works like those of Austin Spare or any of the other great Rosalind Norton, um, people, great artists who've been connected with the occult over the years. Uh, that would give a purpose that modern magic is almost completely lacking. At the same time, if contemporary artists were to be drawing upon the ideas um, that are in magic, then we wouldn't be getting all of this empty, vacuous, conceptual shit that art seems to be frozen in at the moment, where, yes, conceptual art, but it's not, they're not even real concepts. They're concepts in the advertising sense. I blame Charles Saatchi for a lot of this. Um, but if you were to have that exchange of blood between art and magic, I think that both art and magic would be enriched immeasurably. They would both have a human purpose and would relate to the world in which we are actually all existing.